Uh, Ilkay, um, today Manchester City buried Colin Bell, one of the greatest ever players. How appropriate then that was a great performance from you wearing his famous number eight shirt? Yeah, um, I feel proud uh, to, wear his, uh, to wear his number and uh, of course I try, I t I try to represent it as, uh, as good as possible. And uh, yeah, I try my best on the pitch. I think this is the best way um, yeah, to give him the tribute. And uh, yeah, um, if, it's, uh, if it's going so well as today, um, it makes me even more proud to wear this, uh, to wear this number. You're known for many good things, perhaps not your goal scoring, but that's seven in eight in the Premier League now. Where does this come from? I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. Uh, there's not, not really a secret. Um, I just try um, to be in the right spaces, in the right moment. Obviously, I played the last few weeks uh, a bit more offensive role. Um, so, yeah, if, if I get the chance uh, close to the opponent's box, I try to be there and um, try to take the right decisions and my teammates to help me. Um, so, yeah, I, I just try to do my best. Well on Joao Cancelo, lovely ball for your first one. He's almost like a playmaker at fullback. Yeah, he has his ability. He plays uh, when we have the ball. Um, yeah, a little, a little bit of a different role. Plays a bit more in the centre. Um, gets a lot of touches. Um, yeah, and he has the quality to put in these balls. And um, I knew it. That's why I made the run uh, when I saw he's, he has he has a bit of time on the ball. Uh, the ball was perfect. And uh, yeah, um, he's he's doing well. Um, everyone is doing well. He especially the last few weeks. And uh, obviously, we need this rhythm. We need these uh, qualities. Um, to maintain our level, and then um, yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna get even more wins. Look at Gundogan, uh, seven goals in eight Premier League appearances. How impressed have you been by him? It's almost as if the City midfielders almost take it in turns to share their their moment in the spotlight. Well, yeah, uh, Phil Foden's been in, in great form, but Gundogan's sort of been doing. Um, well, not quietly, but you know when we talk about performances, uh, Kevin De Bruyne is the first one he mentioned. Yeah. Then, then it's Foden, and we've been talking about the defensive partnership between uh, Stones and Diaz. Mm. But Gundogan never really gets the credit he deserves. Why? Just because he, he he's not. I'm not saying a superstar, but he just does his work mm -hmm. and goes home. Mm -hmm. You know, there are them players there who, who want to be seen, you know, want to be on Instagram, want to be the next, you know, the Ronaldo. He's just happy to do his work um, and for the team. Yeah. And he, he, like a lot of people see his form and think, well, he's never really had this. In, before he got injured, he was making these runs into mm -hmm. the box before, but he wasn't punishing, you know, his finishing was, I won't say off, but now seven seven goals in, in eight games. Mm. It's just incredible and he, he fully deserves it because when, you, when you're in this team, Man City is one of the hardest squads to break into. Yeah. And when, you know, we talk about Silva for, for years and Kevin De Bruyne, then Foden, like, it's always hard to stake a claim for a consistent spot in the 11. And now he's one of the, the first names on the team sheet for mm. sure. Mm -hmm. Ian? I think the thing with Gundogan is that obviously people continually talk about the strikers and what's happening is with all the players that are in an offensive position, they're taking their opportunities to, to shoot and, and, and have a shot at goal when they get their opportunity. And Gundogan, everybody knows the kind of footballer he is and the calibre of football he is. What we're seeing now is the fact that he is, like I mentioned as well, Mike, earlier on, his calmness and the way he finishes. You know, he's somebody that's obviously used to doing that. Mm. And... and and at the moment, it's, it's his time. And it's a, it's a good thing as well, simply because Kevin De Bruyne is out and you've got somebody else who's come in and he's hit the kind of form we've not seen, but now we know he's capable of. It's incredible, really. Only two Premier League goals from Manchester City have come from strikers, both of them <coughs> from Gabriel Jesus. And here we are talking about them going top of the table. I mean, if, if there was ever any one part of that pitch where they've got more than able deputies without Kevin De Bruyne, it is in midfield, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is in midfield. I think... The, the trial dip against Chelsea, you know, De Bruyne played that, four, that false nine position and at times he, he was a bit lost. He didn't know where to be. But you can see the work in, in training. You know, if Kevin De Bruyne do it, Maris can do it. If Maris didn't want to do it, Sterling can do it. They're and, 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 and that's what I mean. It's mm. about the rotation in football. When you're a player, you've been a player, mm. a manager is like, you know, do this, do that. Mm. And 
sometimes you just got to say, actually, take some responsibility on, on the field. You can say they've been working on the training field to, to interchange. Mahrez is not a striker. He's not going to stand up there and we chested it down. And it, that's not his game. Mm. But what they are, they're clever. They all run into different positions. And it's a joy to watch. Mm. And not only is it a joy to watch, the finishing now, a couple months ago, it was frustrating because yeah. it was wearing teams down, yeah. but not having, that, not having that clinical yeah. edge to the game. And now... But, you know, it's come, and I'm delighted. You know, I think as well, um, when you see that the goals are being shared out, like 11 of them have scored goals and like, like Gundogan's got seven now, I think Raheem's, Raheem's got six and that. But the rest of it, everybody's got fours and fives. They spread the goals mm. around the team. And like I say, anybody who gets in and around the, the area, they, they're being more clinical because they're showing that, yes, we'd love to have that straight up number nine, but it's why we haven't got him. We could still beat teams threes and yeah. fours and fives. So Ilkay Gundogan's first goal, of course, got them up and running. It only took them six minutes to take the lead. But what about Jacques Cancelo's part in it then, Micah? Yeah, Can Cancelo, he's taking the, the fullback role to the next level. Look at his uh, position here. Normally, the fullbacks, they should be wide. He always thought a bit wide, but he's not wide because he's leaving the space for the wingers, whether that be Mahrez or Sterling. And he keeps his that position. The ball gets cleared out. He doesn't go wide again. He stays in that position. And this is why, because he can play that killer pass. He knows there's going to be runners going forward. He trusts his teammates. And from then on, Gundogan, we talked about his composure. Right, you're a striker. Talk, no. talk me through that it's finish. The, it's the touch. It's the touch. Look at the touch how it's dead. Defender's got no chance. He's killed it dead. Mm. So he's made the time for himself. But the, the Canseo... You know, one minute you see him in a, in a, in a like an advanced inverted winger. Mm. Next minute he's like a right-sided right half midfielder and still doing great stuff. So you've got a, a, one player doing two different unbelievable things. Jacques Ancelo then turned from provider to goal scorer himself. It was his first strike in the Premier League in a City shirt. But it wasn't without his controversy though, was it Ian? Yeah, there was a little bit of controversy um, in respect to the, the offside. Um, I think... You can see, I think that, like I say, I think that she's got a little bit confused there because the first thing you can see is Bernardo Silva. She puts the flag up now, um, and you can see, um, um, what's it? Sawyer's. Sawyer's. Sawyer's there. He stopped. He stopped. Probably would have been closing down Canseo, but like, it's confusing. Take nothing away from the finish, but, you know, the, the, we, we, we had a word with Derma, and it is very confusing. I do feel for her, but it was on side. Yeah. Dermot Gallagher said it was given, obviously the, the flag was raised in good faith um, by Sean Massey, um, mm -hmm. Massey Ellis, yeah. saying that she was 100% convinced he was in an offside position, Bernardo Silva that is. Yeah, but only then for VAR and to then have a look back that's at That's what he's there for, and for me, I believe that in that instance, mm. because it's so tight and she couldn't see, then you leave it because you know if it's going to be a goal, mm. then they're going to check it anyway. So she's she'll be covered. She's been she's been magnificent though. She you you've been singing her. She's yeah, one, she's one, one, one of, of the best. Them. This is not um, you know talking talking bad about. Mm. From where she was, yeah. it looked like it, it, looked was, offside. Like it was offside. So yeah. you un you can understand why she put a flag yeah. up. But what it does do, and you said about Romain Sawyer, is it, I suppose, just reaffirms to players... Whistle. They have to play to the have whistle. Have to play to the whistle. It's something that you've learned from, like, primary school. Mm -hmm. You have to play to the whistle. It's like a boxer. You have to, you know what I mean? You have to keep going, man. Keep, keep, your, the guard keep, keep, the keep your guard up at all times. <laughs> it's no different with football. You have to play to the whistle, unfortunately. Yeah.